The Women's Leadership Institute in the Auburn University College of Liberal Arts is pleased to present Leaders Educating Through Discussion. We hope you will take a moment after you watch our presentation to add your own voice to the dialogue on our website, auburn.edu slash women's leadership. Half of them are of different racial ethnic groups than white. I mean, we are getting people to run for office and get in, and I'm very pleased about that. But what we have done is try to use the things that are important for your life. I mean, it's not... <laughs> Politics is great because it teaches you uh, in a very public way what everybody needs to learn, if you know what I mean. For instance, I've learned more about the need for women to have more ambition. We need to have more ambition. And it's hard to have ambition as a woman. It's a little frowned on sometimes. But it's so important for women to keep that. Anna Fels wrote a great book about how women have deferred the dreams they had when they were young. If you want, it's a great fun for you to read because they get squished down. And then, of course, women get so scared about ambition that when they go to negotiate stuff, as my best friends who are negotiators who write about it tell me, that even when women negotiate, you know, when they negotiate tough like men do, it doesn't work because unless they're relentlessly pleasant about it, <laughs> they don't get what they need to get. So you have to really hold on to your ambition. Um, and, and this is not because anybody's stopping you all the time. To a great extent, ambition has to do with what you see out there. Men look at men in office and they say, oh my God, most of them are in office. I could do that. They look in the mirror and say sometimes, don't they, men? I can do that. And, but not because they're bad, because they see other men there. It's just normal. And women have to be invited three times before they ever think about it. I've been having a fantasy since I met your dean. Have you ever thought about running for office? Governor what? Governor of Alabama. Governor of Alabama. I can see this, by the way. At any rate, I've, I've been thinking about it. At any rate, what I've learned through politics is, do you know the research shows that three people have to ask a woman before she'll run? Three different people have to say, have you ever thought about this? I mean, it's just amazing. So uh, one thing that I have taken to doing in any session like this, by the way, because it's really important, I want to know, I want to know by a show of hands, um, because women stop leading, by the way, at college. That's when they start dropping out of leadership. They lead in high school. They lead in elementary school. And then they stop running for the class president or whatever. I, you don't have to say who, but by a show of hands, I want you to think about this a minute. I want you to think if there are any women that you know that would make a good president of their class. Any women that you know that would make a good president of the school, for that matter, but a good president. Do you, can you think of people? Raise your hand. Aha! I knew it. So you know them. All right. Well, I've been doing these kind of things for quite a while now, and uh, I have magic powers. <laughs> so if you don't, in the next 24 hours, tell somebody that you've seen her as a leader, and you think maybe she should consider taking a leadership position and tell her what it is. If you don't do that, something awful will happen to you. <laughs> because it's the only way I've found to get people to really, really take seriously that you have to go in and do this. Ambition is really the, the, the first thing that I ran across it when I started the White House Project was nobody was, we, we started with the presidency, by the way, because it's the one place that you don't have to fight with people about we've never been one, right? So uh, so we put out a, a ballot, uh, probably 1998, about 20 women who could be the president, 20 women who could lead the country. And we put university presidents on it. We put lots of different powerful women. We put corporate women on it, people who could really lead the country. And my friends went crazy. They were like, oh, my God, it went out in Glamour and Latina and Essence and Parade and all these magazines. I mean, because we wanted to get people thinking and voting and doing all this stuff. And we used, it was kind of before social media, right? But it was social media. And my friend said, Marie, that, did you ask these women before you put them on that ballot? I said, no. I mean, why would I ask the president of the University of Pennsylvania if she wanted to be on a 
ballot. No. And they said they are going to be so embarrassed. Uh, oh, my God, I never thought about that. Would they? And sure enough, we put the ballot out, and or, and before it went out and all these things, I, I got to call them now. So I called Dr. Mae Jamison, who's the first African-American woman astronaut. I'd never met her, and I said, Dr. Jamison, my name is Marie Wilson, and blah, 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 and I put you on a ballot of somebody who could lead America, who could be a president, actually. And she went, oh, that's great. I called Judith Roden, then the president of the University of Pennsylvania. We put you on a ballot, and I just, oh, what an interesting way to do it. That sounds good. It kept going like that, let me tell you. <laughs> really, almost everybody but Marion Wright Edelman who said, Marie, I don't want to be the president. I said, no, you don't want to be the president. I just put you on a ballot, okay? But at any rate, everybody said yes. Do you know the only calls I got after that, the only people who had any emotion about that at all were like, why am I not on that ballot? Yes, because it's not that women don't want to lead, but we are not, not enough of us out there to really feel comfortable that you can. By the way, it is why women are leaving the workforce. They tell people they're leaving because they have children. They can't afford to leave when they have children. Come on. They're leaving because they don't see enough women up there. Seeing women is really important. So we have to really fuel each other's ambition. And young women here, this is something I want you to really think about doing. One way I have found to fuel this, as well as confidence, that I want to talk just a little bit about later, is that I want, in, in, when we train women to run for office, we set them down and we say, who's your five? And what we mean is, who are the five people that see you, that you believe will tell you the truth, that you believe will encourage you, give you courage, and that you trust. Who are your five? Because you're not going to run unless you've got five. This is what we need in life all the time. All of us need five people around us. And it's not a board of directors, you know, oh, oh, oh. no. It's five people that you can talk to about your dreams and hear theirs. It's five people that will tell you the truth. It's five people who will encourage you. And it's five people who will discourage you when you're thinking too small. I'm really, really, one thing I'm really pleased about is being one of the five for a woman named Abigail Disney, who is indeed a Disney of the Disneys, right? I, I've known her for years, and she called me one night a few years ago, and she said, so-and-so is asking me to do an endowment campaign for a prestigious and blah, 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 blah. I said, don't do it. She said, Marie, it's a da-da-da-da. I said, don't do it. <laughs> I said, you have more to give. You have more to give. And I'm so excited because not only did she make the film Pray the Devil Back to Hell that got the world to know about Leigh Magobi, who, run, who won the Pulitzer Prize, but she has made a five-part PBS series that started this week on women, war, and peace. One of the biggest series. She found her Disney-ness. <laughs> but the important thing is I, it's very hard, but you've got to have people who not only encourage you, uh, to do things, but discourage you from thinking too low. So I challenge you to have those people around you because they will also give you confidence. And by the way, I went to Chicago this year, and somebody had a little dinner for about four women in Chicago uh, that get together all the time. They have top positions there, and they're always sitting there thinking about what to do for each other to get to the next level. We're going to get you to be this. We're going to get you to be this. We, think about that. What if all the women in this country had four women and were thinking about how to get each other to the next level? I mean, come on. All of you are young enough to have those people around you now. You could start that. But at any rate, um, learning, to, learning to actually use people. There's an article in The New Yorker, by the way, that talks about, uh, do I need a coach? Does everybody need a coach? And I loved it. It was a great surgeon who wrote it, a terrific surgeon. He said, I'm not getting what I should. I need a coach. I mean, all of us need a coach, but we need like five coaches. But the other thing that these people can give you is confidence. One thing that has so struck me is that I thought, I, I meet women that I think are completely confident. I mean, I look at them and I think, God, they walk out in the world. I'm not completely confident. Where did they get that? Confidence is something that we have discovered in terms of getting women to lead. 
that it, it's what we have learned to do with women. Anybody can teach you skills. Anybody can teach you skills. But you have to have a way that you get people to have confidence. I was shocked. I first heard this from a woman named Mo Malum. Mo Malum uh, died of a, of a brain tumor, but she was the British Parliament member who actually uh, did the, uh, the peace process in Northern Ireland. She negotiated the peace process. She was an outrageous woman. Oh, my God. She grew up working class. She went to school. She got elected to parliament. She would, she would sit down with the leaders. And what was so interesting, though, is that she had a brain tumor. Everybody that met her used to come back and say, well, you've got to meet Mo Mullen. So when we had something at the press club that was Why Women Matter and had a lot of other people, from women from other countries who'd done things and had Madeleine Albright, it was a big, fancy affair. I thought, Mo Mullen must come. And sure enough, Mo Mullen came. The only problem was she and Hillary were great friends, so she went to see Hillary first that morning. She spilled coffee on her in the cab. And so she came in, and she looked like, I wish I could look. She was so disheveled, she walked up to the microphone, and I could see people out in the audience going, oh, my God, who is that? <laughs> she said, oh, my goodness. And she stood, and then she started to talk. And then she, I, she was so good that Tony Blair, when he stood up after the Irish peace process was negotiated, people went, when Mo Malam stood up, they stood up and yelled and screamed because of her bravery, because she sat down with the leaders, because she had so much guts. But she beat on the podium that day, and I will never forget, it was before we did training, and she would go, confidence. And I thought, what in the world? And now I have learned how much we need confidence. Uh, I work with Rutgers, and Debbie Walsh at Rutgers told me a story about once, the, Chris, uh, once uh, they called a woman to be on the Asparagus Commission. And uh, yes, in the state of New Jersey, and when Christy Todd Whitman was governor. And they called her and they said, she said, you know, I grow asparagus. I like asparagus. I eat asparagus, but I don't know enough about asparagus. I mean, think about it. I don't know enough about asparagus? Oh, come on. I mean, this is the level of, of uh, confidence that kills me. So we, we need... <laughs> We need confidence, and why can't we have confidence right now? You pick up the paper, and you see who is leading the monetary solutions in the world, and it's a woman from France, Christine Lagarde. And now I know I can call her Angie. I have permission, Angie Merkel. <laughs> I mean, it's the, it's the woman president of Germany. It's the woman who's leading the World Bank. We can have confidence.